J.K. Rowling and Salman Rushdie are among 152 or so writers and academics who have signed an open letter this week denouncing the so-called cancel culture. Those who signed the letter have said they applaud recent protests for racial justice and uh, greater equality. But they said a reckoning has weakened tolerance of different opinions in favour of ideological conformity. A cancel culture refers to the removal of support, including the boycott of someone, usually a celebrity or public figure, who's expressed an opinion that is perceived to be offensive. To discuss more on this, I'm joined by Toby Young, General Secretary of the Free Speech Union and the Guardian columnist and author Owen Jones. Very good afternoon uh, to you both. Uh, let's start with you, uh, Toby Young. So there's been a lot made of the uh, cancel culture this week, especially with all these signatories. Um, is it something that's growing, uh, the, the cancel culture? I mean, people do have a right to speak out, don't they? Yes, I think it is growing. Um, when I set up the Free Speech Union back in February, in part to protect people who are targeted for cancellation, primarily by outrage mobs on social media, we got about six cries for help a week. Now we're getting about six a day. And for every person that contacts us seeking help, there are at least 100 who don't know of our existence and don't know that there's an organisation out there that can protect them if they're targeted in this way. I really welcome this letter because in the past people like Owen Jones have said that cancel culture is a figment of the imagination of white privileged conservatives like me. Well here's a letter signed by some of the most distinguished left-wing writers and intellectuals in the world. You know, J.K. Rowling, Salman Rushdie, Noam Chomsky, Margaret Atwood, uh, all uh, raising the alarm about cancel culture. And they're on his side. They're all left wingers. Uh, and uh, for Owen to be claiming still that it's a figment of the imagination of paranoid conservatives, I think is risking turning him into a bit of a laughing stock. So uh, respond to that, Owen Jones. I didn't have a problem with the letter in of itself, by the way. I think the problem with the term cancel culture is it's a term which has become so broad and vague, it's, it's completely meaningless. Uh, the term, just so we're clear, originated from online vernacular amongst young people to say that someone's gone down in their esteem. So uh, people would tweet uh, about a celebrity they were previously a fan of, uh, that they are cancelled, and by that they meant they no longer uh, saw them in, in as favourable a term. It... Are people being harassed for their political opinions? Of course, that's always happened. I mean, I was beaten up by a far-right extremist and his two accomplices last year. Uh, court found it was motivated by homophobia and hatred of my left-wing political opinions. Your own team at Sky News know full well after being repeatedly harassed by far-right extremists outside your own studios, I wasn't able to take part in uh, discussions outside. Uh, Dawn Butler, a prominent uh, black female politician, has partly been driven from her constituency surgery because of threats from far-right extremists. But the problem with cancel culture, and these examples never somehow seem to fit into that term, is how broad a term it's become. So the Times newspaper gave examples of cancel culture last, uh, last week. They included R. Kelly. R. Kelly's accused of paedophilia. Woody Allen. Woody Allen is still a multimillionaire making films. Scarlett Johansson, apparently cancelled. Probably news to her because she's still being paid millions of pounds to act. Jimmy Kimmel, a TV presenter who remains a TV presenter, getting $15 million a year to present. There's been claims that George Orwell has been cancelled because an obscure website criticised an author who died seven decades ago. And I think that's the problem. The term cancel culture, this idea that people are being cancelled, often simply refers to very powerful and wealthy people with very big public platforms who often go on national radio and television like uh, Toby Young to complain very publicly in uh, their newspaper columns on On Air about how silenced they are to protect them from being criticised on social media. And there are, yeah. finally, examples of people who I do think... I mean, because often this is the other problem, this idea of free speech without consequences. When Chris Williamson, the Labour MP, who said and did many things which offended Jewish people, and he was portrayed as a Corbynite and all the rest, he was kicked out of the Labour Party. I backed that, kicking out the Labour Party. He defended himself on free speech grounds. I don't buy that. David Starkey, when he says that slavery wasn't really genocide because there's so many damn blacks, is what he said, uh, institutions, universities and publishers then cut ties with him. In a democracy, free institutions have the right to decide 
who they give degrees to, who whose books they publish. So that's the problem. It doesn't mean anything anymore because it encompasses everyone from paedophiles or alleged paedophiles uh, to people who have been criticised on social media because they said something many people find it offensive. So, Toby Young, is that, is that a fair point? It's a real broad brush. You can uh, use the term cancel culture to define virtually anything. Well, I think it is used quite broadly, but I think the reason it's used more and more frequently is because there are more and more people who are becoming victims of cancel culture. I mean, of course, there are some people who uh, are, are attempts to cancel them are made and they survive, like J.K. Rowling. But for every one that does survive, there are at least 100 uh, who suffer, who are penalised, who lose their livelihoods, their careers. I'll give you one example. Um, a, a member of the Free Speech Union, Nick Buckley, set up a fantastic charity in Manchester called Mancunian Way in uh, 2011, works with disadvantaged young people in Manchester, a lot of homeless people. Um, he wrote a blog post a couple of months ago uh, making mildly critical points about some of the uh, policies of the Black Lives Matter movement. For instance, he didn't think it was a good idea to defund the police. Uh, but because he'd written this blog post, a petition was started on change.org calling for him to be fired from the charity that he himself had set up. And he duly was fired by the trustees. They immediately caved into this on online outrage mob. Another example, Gillian Phillip, a very successful author. She tweeted, I stand with J.K. Rowling when J.K. Rowling was subject to a string of unspeakable misogynistic abuse just because she uh, challenged some aspects of the trans lobby. When she tweeted, I stand with J.K. Rowling, she lost a two book deal. That kind of thing happens again and again. And for all the high profile examples of people who really are cancelled, think of all those people who are self-censoring for fear of being cancelled. There was a if survey. People, if people out, have a fear people, of a backlash, should they perhaps rein in their comments somewhat? Still speak out, but perhaps not to such an extent. Well, it depends what you mean by rein in and uh, how you're defining speaking out. I mean, I'll give you an example. Suzanne Moore, um, a Guardian columnist, wrote a column in which she uh, took issue with some of the more dogmatic demands of the trans lobby and 338 members of staff, writers at The Guardian, including Owen Jones, wrote a letter denouncing her, denouncing her for her anti-trans views. And I'm afraid that's the way these people operate. If you don't sign up to every jot and tittle of the woke agenda, you're a transphobe or a racist. Suzanne Moore's about as far from a transphobe as it's possible to be. She was just politely disagreeing and pointing out that there were some conflicts between women's rights and trans rights in areas like women's only sports and changing rooms and whether trans women should go to women's prisons. A perfectly legitimate point of view doesn't make her a transphobic bigot, but according to Owen Jones and his pals, she had to be denounced because she had anti-trans views, and those views were making people at the Guardian feel unsafe. This right, is the uh, way. Let's go back. Let's go back to Owen Jones. Let, let, let's, uh, let's hear from Owen. Uh, so the letter Toby Young's referring to didn't mention Suzanne Moore at all. It didn't mention any columnist. It did call uh, for more favourable coverage for minority, which objectively gets a very hard time for society. So as, as an example, I think, I think this is a really good example of who is silenced and who is not. Last week, YouGov did a poll which found that 50% of people support gender ID for trans people, 57% of women support it, and only 43% and of men. Women are more likely to support trans rights than men. That's what every poll shows. There is virtually no newspaper in this country which has that position. Whose voices are really being silenced? There are lots of columnists who speak out about what they see as the danger of trans rights. There are very few who make the case for trans people who are going through the same thing that people went through in the 1980s. Trans people, you can't cancel a trans newspaper columnist in Britain because they don't exist. You can't cancel a trans member of parliament because they don't exist either. And I do think, look, Toby Young is a striking example of this. And I think this all comes back, his free speech union, let's be clear about why it was founded in the first place. Toby Young was going to be appointed to a public body. It was because of nepotism. He's friends with the now Prime Minister, Boris Johnson. Right, and, and no, 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 this is a really important point, a really important point. Uh, and very, very, very briefly, please. Toby, we're going to this. He, 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 he was found to have tweeted over and over again about MPs' breasts. He leered over the breasts of a 14-year-old. He joked about masturbation. No, I'm, sure, I'm, sure people are, I'm sure people have got a, a lot to, to say about various issues. Just quickly, uh, Toby... Uh, Young, just come back on that. <laughs> you no, can, yeah, no, I, I, I'm sorry, I, we are running out of time. I've just got to get a quick comment in from, from Toby Young, very, very quickly. 
look, I've admitted that I've said some foolish things. I've done some foolish things in the past, just as Owen Jones has. The difference between him and me is that I've apologised for them. Uh, the problem with the... Right, no, sorry, sorry. Um, let, let, let's just leave it there. I just wanted uh, your sort of right of reply there. I know it's a very, very heated uh, discussion and uh, one we will no doubt come back to in the, the coming days and weeks. But uh, for, for the time being, thank you very much indeed, gentlemen. That's uh, Toby Young and uh, Owen Jones uh, joining us there.